I have been so excited that Sony has finally been bringing a lot of PlayStation exclusives to the PC. We've seen this with God of War, among others, and it's been very exciting. And the other thing that's nice is when the PC ports actually try to capitalize on being good PC games, featuring things like ultra-wide support, um, unlocked refresh rates, um, they actually improve the graphics. Like we're seeing here in this trailer, they're saying they're improving the shadows uh, in this version of the game. It will include uh, ultra-wide support, and they're even being clear that they will support super ultra-wide settings, which is really nice to see. They'll have ray-traced reflections as well as more detailed reflections than were available on the PS5 ray-tracing update, which is also very good to see. Um, they're not capping to 60 FPS like some bad console ports do, which again is really nice to see. They have DLSS support as well as DLAA. That's where you run it at the native resolution but use NVIDIA's anti-aliasing. They'll have DualSense controller support on the PC. All of this is really exciting, but... At what cost? What are the system requirements? Well, this is one of the things I'm actually most excited about. The system requirements are extremely reasonable. It looks like the game is going to be very scalable, and even somebody on a GTX 950 can play the game, although would you really want to? So, first of all, can I also just say, uh, as it seems like they're doing everything right, this is actually a good system requirements list. I would like to see one more column here for 1440p without ray tracing. That would be nice. I'll give you some of my thoughts on that. Uh, but overall, this is one of the good system requirements charts. Instead of just saying minimum recommended and then just leaving it at that with telling you a GPU but not telling you what resolution or frame rate or settings, we actually get the resolution, the frame rate, and the settings that this is targeting. Now that doesn't mean these always end up actually being accurate. Also, these tend to say either 30 FPS or 60 FPS, when in reality, these are probably meaning, um, you know, an average, and 30 FPS just means you're not getting to 60 very, uh, you know, very often, so you couldn't lock that. So in reality, the performance, if you run the game unlocked without a frame rate limit, will be somewhere in between. Now anyway, let's hop right in here. If you have a GTX 950 or an AMD equivalent and an Intel Core i3-4160 and eight gigabytes of RAM and 75 gigabytes of hard drive space, you can at least play the game. Now that's really good news, but what if you don't have that exact GPU? What does that mean? Well, if we hop over to Tech Power Up, which has one of the best relative performance charts out there um, that I've seen, we can dig into what this means if you have other GPUs. So a GTX 950 is very similar in performance to these other ones you'll see nearby here. For example, it's a little bit stronger than an RX 460 um, or a GTX 660. It is, um, you know, a little bit weaker, but very close to a GTX 1050, a GTX 580, 660 Ti. So if you're somewhere in this ballpark, what this really means is you will be able to run the game, but again, only at 720p and you're not gonna be getting much over 30 FPS. It's not gonna be a 60 FPS experience. But the nice thing is that you can actually at least run the game and they're confirming the settings it'll be at. Now it's gonna be on a, uh, asking for a CPU of just an i3-4160. Now I double checked and I was correct. This is just a dual core with hyper threading. So this is, two core, four thread CPU from 2014. So this is really not asking for a lot from the CPU, but again, that's only giving you very low settings at 30 FPS. So this CPU will be struggling, but it is gonna be able to run the game. Now they're saying only eight gigabytes of RAM required here and a hard, uh, hard drive is okay at the minimum here. But please notice that as you jump up beyond this point, it jumps to an SSD being recommended for everything past this point. Um, which again, if guys, if you don't have an SSD yet, that's gonna be one of the best upgrades you could do to your PC. Everything will feel faster on an SSD. Um, just using your PC will be a whole new experience. Anyway. Um, if we jump up here, also notice that the CPU demands don't go crazy here. And because this game 
I think originally did have PlayStation 4 support, although the PC version should be based on, you know, this remastered version, which, you know, should have high graphics even beyond what the PS5 could do. Um, but the CPU in the PS4 was very weak, so our CPU demands still aren't going up very high here, jumping up to an i5-4670 or a Ryzen 5 1600. Now that core i5, um, no, I don't want to tell you what I think, Intel, uh, is four core, four threads. So that's still only a quad core that doesn't even have hyper threading. And this is still quite old. This is actually a 2013 chip. So we're really not asking for a whole lot from the CPU, and that's even going up to 60 FPS at medium settings. So I really think anybody with any kind of reasonably modern CPU is gonna be absolutely fine in this game. Now, if we track the CPU requirements, ah, um, all the way down the line here, they continue to increase going up to an i5-11400, Ryzen 5 3600, so much more modern from the last uh, few years. Uh, mid-range CPUs, and then with ray tracing, they jump up even higher. But I've got to say, guys, I think sometimes uh, system requirements just kind of increase the CPU meaninglessly in relation to this frame rate. If you're able to hit 60 FPS solidly um, using one of these, ray tracing does add a bit more to the CPU, believe it or not. Some people don't know that. It's not just hard on the GPU. Uh, it does add a bit more to the CPU. <laughs> I'm going to come back in the screen here. But I would say don't get scared off by that 12700K and 5900X on the far end there. I think that's overstating it given how low these CPU demands are earlier on in this chart. Also know that the RAM, um, for the most part, is really only asking for 16 gigabytes. And the fact that they're jumping up to 32 gigabytes at the end here, again, I, I think you're going to be fine with 16, given that they said you could do 60 FPS ray tracing at 1440p with 16 gigabytes. So I think sometimes these system requirements charts just go a little overboard towards the, the high end um, when you get there. Anyway, now how about the GPUs? So one thing that's fantastic is the most popular GPU on Steam surveys is still the GTX 1060. And they're saying that a GTX 1060 can hit 1080p 60 FPS medium. That is perfect. That is exactly what a just, you know, baseline, you know, medium 1080p experience should be. So as long as they're actually able to deliver on this performance, that's fantastic. Now, if we jump back into the relative performance chart, you can see where your GPU falls in relation to this, also compared to the GTX 950. So remember that was your just barely getting in the door. If we continue to scroll up the line here, we're getting closer and closer towards um, that GTX 1060. Notice we're passing up the 1050 Ti is actually well beyond the, uh, you know, your, your 720p 30 <laughs> kind of requirements. We're jumping up here to like your RX 6400, your, your GTX 1650, all of that. Um, we're passing those up and now we get to the GTX 1060, which has on average more than double the performance of that GTX 950 that we saw as the original baseline. So I'm gonna set this as my baseline now. Remember the AMD equivalent is that RX 580, which has uh, on average very similar performance to the GTX 1060. Um, so if you're somewhere in this ballpark, RX 480, GTX 690, uh, GTX 1060, RX 5500, uh, 5800, uh, RX 5, uh, sorry, RX 580, um, GTX 980, 1650 Super. This is all of your 1080p medium, uh, 60 FPS type of system here. And then as you go past that, you'd either be able to turn up the settings, have a higher frame rate, or maybe jump up to 1440p. Because here's where I feel like this system requirement chart is a bit lacking. So what would it take for 1440p? Well, we can't uh, completely confirm that, but they are saying that you could go all the way up to very high settings, 4K 60 FPS with an RTX 3070 or a 6800 XT. So that's leaving a massive gap going from the GTX 1060 up to that point. How much more powerful is an RTX 3070? Well, as we scroll up this list, and again, you might spot your GPU and you can see its relative performance here, meaning again, how much better than 1080p 60 FPS medium can you do, right? 
Um, so, so here's where we're getting like to a 3050. That's like 37% faster than our GTX 1060. Your RTX 3060 is 88% faster than that. That's, that's a lot stronger. So again, like I think if you're on something like this, you should probably be fine at 1440p, at least at medium settings, um, and probably higher than that. But to get all the way up to an RTX 3070, um, that's actually more than double. We're talking like 2.7, 2.8 times the performance of the 1080p medium GPU, but that's jumping all the way up to 4K 60 at very high. So that means that again, I think our 1440p uh, GPUs, uh, I would imagine I think are gonna be fairly reasonable if you're playing at medium settings. And then if you're playing at the higher settings, um, th this doesn't sound super demanding, to be honest. Like a, a GTX, sorry, an RTX 3070 delivering 4K 60 FPS um, is, uh, is, is actually means that this is pretty reasonable when you're not running ray tracing. Now, I am a little bit concerned that they're putting the RX 6800 XT up with the RTX 3070, even without ray tracing activated here. Um, that seems a bit strange to me because generally the RX 6800 XT is a lot faster than an RTX 3070. If we set that 3070 as a baseline, on average, a 6800 XT would be like 26% faster if you're not using ray tracing. And that's at 4K resolution. At, at um, lower resolutions, it usually has even more of an advantage. So I'm hoping that doesn't mean that this is gonna be one of those games that won't perform as well on AMD GPUs as it kind of should. It could also just be the system requirement chart not making a lot of sense. Uh, a 6800 non-XT would generally be as good or better than a 3070, so that seems a bit strange to me. We'll see what happens there when we actually get the game and benchmark it. Um, by the way, if there's an interest in me benchmarking this on my channel, let me know, and I can probably go ahead and buy the game and do that. Let me slide over here ah, as we look at the ray tracing requirements. Apparently, I don't have my green screen pulled all the way over. Eh, you know what? what? Whatever. Maybe we move the camera there. All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, so for ray tracing, it looks like 1440p, 60 FPS, ray tracing high. Notice that it goes all the way up to very high. And as far as I know, the only ray tracing in the game seems to be reflections. And the consoles were able to do ray tracing uh, with the reflections. So I think these will be pretty minimal reflections, similar to what consoles could do. Uh, and they're saying that you could get um, uh, 1440p 60 or 4K 30 with an RTX 3070 or an AMD RX 6900 XT. Um, and then if you want to jump up to the uh, 4K 60 FPS with the very high ray tracing settings, that you'd want an RTX 3080 or a 6950 XT. Now, uh, as far as I know, I mean, I know this is, um, it did confirm that they have DLSS support. What I don't know is whether they'd be I including using upscaling technologies when recommending these ray trace settings. That's not clear here, but um, it's possible that these ray tracing settings just aren't super demanding given that the, the ray tracing game might've been originally developed for consoles. Um, also, as far as we know, I haven't seen anything about AMD FSR or FSR 2.0 support, although I will say that most games these days that have DLSS are able to be modded to support FSR 2.0, although then you have to go through the hot hassle of, of uh, doing that whole mod. Overall, I've got to say, I'm really happy with these system requirements. I love a game that can scale well down to lower end hardware. And I think targeting 1080p 60 FPS at medium settings on a GTX 1060 and RX 580 is perfect. That's exactly what a game should do. And then just be able to scale up from there to take advantage of higher resolutions, frame rates, and graphic settings, even including ray tracing. Um, as you have the hardware to run it. So overall, I'm really happy. It looks like the release date here is August 12th. Um, I believe it's coming to both Steam and the Epic Game Store uh, on PC, uh, which they have confirmed down here in the corner. What do you guys think? Are you interested in this one? Should I benchmark it? On which GPUs? I have most of them, but not all of them. <laughs> um, I hope all of you have an excellent day.